Christians, his direct dis disciples, to write literatures, specifically Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatan Goswami, and Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami, who was very learned from a Brahmin family, he himself uh, gathered, you could say, research papers that would later be developed by the other six Goswamis. So we have the Hari Bhakti Vilas, which gives us um, mostly a way to live in this world, how to follow proper etiquette, the different samskars or purificatory rituals that we're supposed to perform, how to worship the deities. <clears throat> and um, it's a very, very, very lengthy book. And so he also uh, collected research on what would later be known as the Sandarbhas or the six philosophical works that were fully developed by Srila Jiva Goswami. So Gopal Bhatta Goswami, through the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was able to compile vast amounts of research that would give us proper achar and vichar. So he is our achar guru and vichar guru. Achar means proper conduct, proper etiquette. And so he is our achar guru by giving us Hari Bhakti Vilas. And vichar means the instructions and theology that um, is, is fully developed. So the vichar is through the sandarbhas. So he gives us achar and vichar. And there's a very beautiful verse where it says, Gorara Ami, Gorara Ami, Gorara Ami. So many people are saying, I am Goras, I am Goras, I am Goras, I am Lord Chaitanya's, I am Lord Chaitanya's. But then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that one who is actually mine, they don't just repeat the words, I am Lord Chaitanya's, but they pro they properly follow the achar and vichar of Lord Chaitanya. So this achar and vichar, proper conduct and theology is given to us by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through the six Goswamis. And so for us, the six Goswamis are very important to us to understand their life, to understand their teachings, and to get their mercy so that we can truly be Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's. We can actually be Goras because we know what the proper conduct and philosophy is. And so in the section of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, <coughs> Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is um, traveling in South India. And <clears throat> through his travels in South India, he comes to a place known as Rangakshetra. And we'll find out that this is the home of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, who was living there at that time as a young boy. And his father, Venkata Bhatt, has some deep conversations with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I'm going to begin at uh, Madhya Leela, chapter nine. And if anybody wants to follow along, um, we're going, going to start with text 79. So, Amagyana Timurandasya, Gananjana Shalakaya, Chakshuran Militam Yena, Tasmai Shi Gurve Namaha, Shi Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sva Padantikam, Vancha Kalpa Tarubyascha Kripas and Divyevacha, Patitanam Pavane Pyo, Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda 
Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Text 79. Papa Nashane Vishnu Kaila Darashan Shri Ranga Kshetre Tabe Karila Gaman. After visiting the holy place named Shiva Kshetra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arrived at Papa Nashana and there saw the temple of Lord Vishnu. Then he finally reached Shri Ranga Kshetra. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. There are two holy places known as Papa Nashana. One is located eight miles southwest of Kumbakonam, and the other lies near the river Tamraparni in the district of Tirunelveli, 20 miles west of the city of Tirunelveli, or Palamakota. Shiranga Kshetra, Shirangam, is a very famous place. It lies in the district of Tiruchirapali, about 10 miles west of Kumbakonam, and near the city of Tiruchirapali, on an island of the Kaveri River. The Shirangam temple is the largest in India, and there are seven walls surrounding it. There are also seven roads leading to Sri Rangam. The ancient names of these roads are the road of Dharma, the road of Rajamahendra, the road of Kula Shekar, the road of Ali Nandana, the road of Tiru Vikrama, the Tirubidi road of Madamadi Gaisa, and the road of Ada Yavala Indana. The temple was founded before the reign of Dharma Varma who reigned before Rajamahendra. Raja Many celebrated kings like Kula Shekar, Nyamunacharya, or Ala Bandaru, resided in the temple of Sri Rangam. Nyamunacharya, Sri Ramanujacharya, Sudarshanacharya, and others also supervised this temple. The incarnation of the goddess of fortune known as Goda Devi or Sri Andal was one of the 12 Alvars, liberated persons known as Divya Suris. So just as we spoke about the six Goswamis being the ones who give us the proper etiquette and philosophy, theology of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in South India, there are personalities known as the 12 Alvars, who are seen as the uh, you could say the Acharyas, or they'd be like the Goswamis of, in the Sri Ramanuja Acharya Sampradaya. So one of the Alvars, known as Andal, she is an incarnation of the goddess of fortune. <clears throat> she was married to the deity of Lord Sri Ranganath, and later she entered into the body of the Lord. An incarnation of Karmuka, named Tudamanga, also one of the Alvars, acquired some money by stealing and built the fourth boundary wall of Sri Rangam. It is said that in the year 289 of the Age of Kali, the Alvar of the name Tondara Dipati was born. While engaged in devotional service, he fell victim to a prostitute, and Sri Ranganat, seeing his devotee so degraded, sent one of his servants with a golden plate to that, to that prostitute. When the golden plate was discovered missing from the temple, there was a search, and it was found in the prostitute's house. When the devotee saw Ranganat's mercy upon this prostitute, his mistake was rectified. He then prepared the third boundary wall of the Ranganat temple, and cultivated a Tulsi garden there. There is also a celebrated disciple of Ramanujacharya's known as Kuresh. 
Sri Rama Palai was the son of Kresh, and his son was Vag Vagvijay Bhatta, whose son was Vedavyas Bhatta or Sri Sudarshanacharya. When Sudarshanacharya was an old man, the Muslims attacked the temple of Rangana and killed about 1,200 Sri Vaishnavas. At that time, the deity of Rangana was transferred to the temple of Tirupati in the kingdom of G Vijayanagara. The governor of Gingi, Gopanarya, brought Sri Rangana from the temple of Tirupati to a place known as Singabrahma, where the Lord was situated for three years. In the year 1371, the deity was reinstalled in the Ranganath temple. On the eastern wall of the Ranganath temple is an inscription written by Vedanta Desika relating how Ranganath is returned to the temple. Text 80. <clears throat> Kaverite snanakari deki Ranganath stuti pranatikari manila kretart. After bathing in the river Kaveri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw the temple of Rangana and offered his ardent prayers and obeisances. Thus he felt himself successful. In the temple of Rangana, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanted and danced in ecstatic love of Godhead. Seeing his performance, everyone was struck with wonder. A Vaishnav known as Venkatabhat then invited Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his home with great respect. Purport. Sri Venkatabhat was a Vaishnav Brahmin and an inhabitant of Sri Ranga Kshetra. He belonged to the disciplic succession of Sri Ramanuja Acharya. Sri Ranga is one of the places of pilgrimage in the province of Tamil Nadu. The inhabitants of that province do not retain the name Venkata. It is therefore supposed that Venkata Bhatt did not belong to that province, although he may have been residing there for a very long time. Venkata Bhatt was in a branch of the Ramanuja Sampradaya known as Badagalai. He had a brother in the Ramanuja Sampradaya known as Sripad Prabodhananda Sarasvati. The son of Venkatabhat was later known in the Gaudiya Sampradaya as Gopal Bhatta Goswami, and he established the Radha Raman temple in Vrindavan. More information about him may be found in a book known as the Bhakti Ratnakar by Narahari Chakravarti. So, Yesterday was the appearance day of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. And so we'll hear about his father. And Bhakti Ratnakar goes into much detail about Gopal Bhatta Goswami because the book Bhakti Ratnakar is mostly a uh, description of what happens after the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we have three great teachers named Srinivasacharya, Naratam Das Thakur, and Shamananda Pandit, which the book mostly talks about their lives and what they did right after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's disappearance. And Srinivasacharya is the disciple of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So there's much information about Gopal Bhatta Goswami, even about Radha Raman, who was a, in the beginning, he, uh, Radha Raman was a Shalagram Shila, who then transformed into a very beautiful threefold bending form deity of Krishna. And Radha Raman is there in Vrindavan to this day. And uh, I, my, my humble suggestion is that if you have any time today, just type in Radha Raman in and, and Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever you use and see the beautiful pictures of Radha Raman, who is just one of the most beautiful deities ever is 
is just <laughs> breathtaking to to see. And uh, so yeah, we will continue hearing about Venkata Bhatt. So at this time, even though it's not mentioned, Gopal Bhatta Goswami was a young boy during this time period. But when Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami, when he <clears throat> went to beg blessings to write Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, some of the intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya, like Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Lokanat Goswami, Bhugarbha Goswami, and others, <clears throat> they gave him blessings and empowered him to write this scripture. But they said, please do not mention our names. They were really imbued with such humility that they didn't want to take away from the beautiful descriptions of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so Narahari Chakravarti, who is a... Um, he later writes more about Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So just keep in mind that during this time, Gopal Bhatta Goswami is a young boy. So his father, Sri Venkata Bhatt, took Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his home. After he washed the Lord's feet, all the members of his family drank the water. So Gopal Bhatta Goswami drank the water of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's feet. After offering lunch to the Lord, Venkata Bhatt submitted that the period of Chaturmasya had already arrived. Venkata Bhatt said, please be merciful to me and stay at my house during Chaturmasya. Speak about Lord Krishna's pastimes and kindly deliver me by your mercy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained at the house of Venkata Bhatt for four continuous months. The Lord passed his days in great happiness, enjoying the transcendental mellow of discussing Lord Krishna's pastimes. While there, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took his bath in the river Kaveri and visited the temple of Sri Ranga. Every day, the Lord also danced in ecstasy. The beauty of Lord Chaitanya's body and his ecstatic love of God were witnessed by everyone. Many people used to come to see him, and as soon as they saw him, all their unhappiness and distress vanished. Many hundreds of thousands of people from various countries came to see the Lord, and after seeing him, they all chanted the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Indeed, they did not chant anything but the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, and all of them became Lord Krishna's devotees. Thus, the general populace was astonished. All the Vaishnav Brahmins residing in Sri Ranga Kshetra invited the Lord to their homes. Indeed, he had an invitation every day. Each day, the Lord was invited by a different Brahmin, but some of the Brahmins did not get the opportunity to offer him lunch during, because the period of Chaturmasya came to an end. In the holy place of Sri Ranga Kshetra, a Brahmin Vaishnav used to visit the temple daily and recite the entire text of the Bhagavad Gita. The Brahmin regularly read the 18 chapters of the Bhagavad Gita in great transcendental ecstasy, but because he could not pronounce the words correctly, people used to joke about him. <clears throat> Due to his incorrect pronunciation, people sometimes criticized him and laughed at him, but he did not care. He was full of ecstasy due to reading the Bhagavad Gita and was personally very happy. While reading the book, the Brahmin experienced transcendental bodily transformations. The hairs on his body stood on end, tears welled up in his eyes, and his body trembled and perspired as he read. Seeing this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became very happy. Purport. Although the Brahmin could not pronounce the words very well due to illiteracy, he still experienced ecstatic symptoms while reading the Bhagavad Gita. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very pleased to observe these symptoms, and this indicates that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is pleased by devotion, not by erudite scholarship. 
erudite scholarship. Even though the words were imperfectly pronounced, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Krishna himself, did not think this very serious. Rather, the Lord was pleased by the bhav, devotion. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 5, Text 11, this is confirmed. On the other hand, that literature, which is full of descriptions of the transcendental glories of the name, fame, forms, and pastimes of the unlimited Supreme Lord, is a different creation, full of transcendental words directed toward bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of this world's misdirected civilization. Such transcendental liter literatures, even though imperfectly composed, are heard, sung, and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. The purport to this verse may be considered for further information on the subject. Text 97. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked the Brahmin, my dear sir, why are you in such ecstatic love? Which portion of the Bhagavad Gita gives you such transcendental pleasure? The Brahmin replied, I am illiterate and therefore do not know the meaning of the words. Sometimes I read the Bhagavad Gita correctly and sometimes incorrectly. But in any case, I'm doing this in compliance with the orders of my spiritual master. Purport. This is a good example of a person who'd become so successful that he was able to capture the attention of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu even while reading the Bhagavad Gita incorrectly. His spiritual activities did not depend on material things, such as correct pronunciation. pronunciation. Rather, his success depended on strictly following the instructions of his spiritual master. Yasya deve para bhaktir yata deve tata guru tasyaite kititiyarta prakashante mahatmanaha. Only unto those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master are all the imports of Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. From the Svetashvatar Upanishad 623. Actually, the meaning of the words of the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam are revealed to one strictly following the orders of the spiritual master. They are also revealed to one who has equal faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, being faithful to both Krishna and the spiritual master is the secret of success in spiritual life. <clears throat> Text 99. The Brahmin continued, actually, I see only Lord Krishna sitting on a chariot as Arjuna's charioteer. Taking the reins in his hands, he appears very beautiful and blackish. While seeing Lord Krishna sitting in a chariot and instructing Arjuna, I'm filled with ecstatic happiness. As long as I read the Bhagavad Gita, I simply see the Lord's beautiful features it is for this reason that I am reading the Bhagavad Gita. My mind cannot be distracted from this. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the Brahmin, Indeed, you are an authority in the reading of the Bhagavad Gita. Whatever you know constitutes the real purport of the Bhagavad Gita. Purport. According to the Shastras, Bhaktiya Bhagavatam Grayam Nabudya one should understand the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam by hearing them from a real devotee. One cannot understand them simply by erudite scholarship or sharp intelligence. It is also said, to one who reads the Bhagavad Gita with faith and devotion, the essence of Vedic knowledge is, is revealed. And according to the Svetashvatar Upanishad 623, only unto those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master are all the imports of Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. All Vedic literatures are to be understood with faith and devotion, not by mundane scholarship. We have therefore presented Bhagavad Gita as it is. There are many so-called scholars and philosophers who read the Bhagavad Gita in a scholarly way. They simply waste their time and mislead those who read their commentaries. Text 
text 103. After saying this, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced the Brahmin, and the Brahmin, catching the lotus feet of the Lord, began to cry. The Brahmin said, upon seeing you, my happiness is doubled. I take it that you are the same, Lord Krishna. The mind of the Brahmin was purified by the revelation of Lord Krishna. So we, here we have the Krishna Spurtie, the Spurti revelation of Lord Krishna. The mind of the Brahmin was purified by the revelation of Lord Krishna, and therefore he could understand the truth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in all details. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then taught the Brahmin very thoroughly and requested him not to disclose the fact that he was Lord Krishna himself. That Brahmin became a great devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and for four continuous months, he did not give up the Lord's company. <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained at the house of Venkata Bhatt and constantly talked with him about Lord Krishna. In this way, he was very happy. Krishna Katananda. That's a beautiful, beautiful phrase. Krishna Katananda, the transcendental bliss of talking about Krishna. Krishna Katananda. Being a Vaishnav in the Ramanuja Sampradaya, Venkata Bhatt worshipped the deities of Lakshmi and Narayan. Seeing his pure devotion, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very satisfied. Constantly associating with each other, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Venkata Bhatt gradually developed a friendly relationship. Indeed, sometimes they laughed and joked together. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the Bhattacharya, Your worshipable goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, always remains on the chest of Narayan, and she is certainly the most chaste woman in the creation. However, my Lord is Lord Sri Krishna, a cowherd boy who is engaged in tending cows. Why is it that Lakshmi, being such a chaste wife, wants to associate with my Lord? Just to associate with Krishna, Lakshmi abandoned all transcendental happiness in Vaikuntha and for a long time accepted vows and regulative principles and performed unlimited austerities. <coughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said, O oh Lord, we do not know how the serpent Kaliya attained such an opportunity to be touched by the dust of your lotus feet. Even the goddess of fortune for this end performed austerities for centuries, giving up all other desires and observing austere vows. Indeed, we do not know how the serpent Kaliya got such an opportunity. Purport, this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10.16.36, was spoken by the wives of the Kaliya serpent. Venkatabhat then said, Lord Krishna and Lord Narayan are one and the same, but the pastimes of Krishna are more relishable due to their sportive nature. Since Krishna and Narayan are the same personality, Lakshmi's association with Krishna does not break her vow of chastity. Rather, it was, it was in great fun that the goddess of fortune wanted to associate with Lord Krishna. Purport. This is the answer to Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's question, and from this we can understand that Venkata Bhatt knew the truth. He told Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Narayan is a form of Krishna associated with transcendental opulence. Although Krishna is two-armed and Narayan four-armed, there is no difference in the person. They are one and the same. Narayan is as beautiful as Krishna, but Krishna's pastimes are more sportive. It is not that the sportive pastimes of Krishna make him different from Narayan. Lakshmi's desiring to associate with Krishna was perfectly natural. In other words, it is understandable that a chaste woman wants to associate with her husband in all his different dresses. Therefore, one should not criticize Lakshmi for wanting to associate with Krishna. Text 117. 
Siddhanta tas tva bedepi shrisha krishna svarupayo rase not krishite krishna rupam esha rasastitihi. Venkatabhat continued, according to transcendental realization, there is no difference between the forms of Narayan and Krishna. Yet, in Krishna, there is a special transcendental attraction due to the conjugal mellow, and consequently he surpasses Narayan. This is the conclusion of transcendental mellows. Purport. This verse quoted by Venkatabhat is also found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1259. Text 118. The goddess of fortune considered that her vow of chastity would not be damaged by her relationship with Krishna. Rather, by associating with Krishna, she could enjoy the benefit of the rasa dance. Venkatabhat further explained. Mother Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, is also an enjoyer of transcendental bliss. Therefore, if she wanted to enjoy herself with Krishna, what fault is there? Why are you joking so about this? Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, I know that there is no fault on the part of the goddess of fortune, but still, she could not enter into the rasa dance. We hear this from the revealed scriptures. When Lord Sri Krishna was dancing with the gopis and the Raslila, the gopis were embraced around the neck by the Lord's arms. This transcendental favor was never bestowed upon the goddess of fortune or the other consorts in the spiritual world, nor was such a thing ever imagined by the most beautiful girls in the heavenly planets, girls whose bodily luster and aroma exactly resembled the beauty and fragrance of lotus flowers. And what to speak of worldly, worldly women who may be very, very beautiful according to material estimation. Purport, this is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 1047.60. But can you tell me why the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, cannot enter the rasa dance? The authorities of Vedic knowledge can enter the dance and associate with Krishna. Great sages conquer the mind and senses by practicing the mystic yoga system and controlling the breath. Thus engaging in mystic yoga, they see the super soul within their hearts and ultimately enter into impersonal Brahman. But even the enemies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead attain that position simply by thinking of the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> However, the damsels of Raj, the gopis, being attracted by the beauty of Krishna, simply wanted to embrace him and his arms, which are like serpents. Thus the gopis ultimately tasted the nectar of the lotus feet of the Lord. Similarly, we Upanishads can also taste the nectar of his lotus feet by following in the footsteps of the gopis. Purport. This verse is from Srimad Bhagavatam. 1087.23. So some of the Upanishads, the transcendental scriptures, the Upanishads, the personalities. So the scriptures personified actually followed in the footsteps of the gopis and were able to enter into the Rasalila. So having been asked by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu why the goddess of fortune cannot enter into the rasa dance, whereas the authorities on Vedic knowledge, Shrutis, the Upanishads, could, Venkatabhat replied, I cannot enter into the mysteries of this behavior. Venkatabhat then said, I am an ordinary human being. Since my intelligence is very limited and I am easily agitated, my mind cannot enter within the deep ocean of the pastimes of the Lord. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna himself. You know the purpose of your activities, and the person whom you enlighten can also understand your pastimes. Purport, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, and his pastimes cannot be understood by blunt material senses. One has to purify the senses by rendering transcendental loving service unto the Lord. When the Lord is pleased and reveals himself, 
one can understand the transcendental form, name, qualities, and pastimes of the Lord. This is confirmed in the Kata Upanishad and Mundaka Upanishad. Anyone who is favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead can understand his transcendental name, qualities, form, and pastimes. Text 127. The Lord replied, Lord Krishna has a special characteristic. He attracts everyone's heart by the mellow of his personal conjugal love. By following in the footsteps of the inhabitants of the planet known as Rajloka or Goloka Vrindavan, one can attain the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. However, in that planet, the inhabitants do not know that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There, someone may accept him as a son and sometimes bind him to a grinding mortar. Someone else may accept him as an intimate friend and attaining victory, victory over him, playfully mount his shoulders. The inhabitants of Rajbhumi know Krishna as the son of Maharaj Nanda, the king of Rajbhumi, and they consider that they can have no relationship with the Lord in the rasa of opulence. One who worships the Lord by following in the footsteps of the inhabitants of Vrindavan attains him in the transcendental planet of Raj, where he is known as the son of Maharaj Nanda. Purport. The inhabitants of Raj Bhumi, or Goloka Vrindavan, know Krishna as the son of Maharaj Nanda. They do not accept him as the supreme personality of Godhead, as people in general do. The Lord is the supreme maintainer of everyone and the chief personality among all personalities. In Vrajbhumi, Krishna is certainly the central point of love, but no one knows him there as the supreme personality of Godhead. Rather, a person may know him as a friend, son, lover, or master. In any case, the center is Krishna. The inhabitants of Vrajbhumi are related to the Lord in servitude, friendship, parental love, and conjugal love. A person engaged in devotional service may accept any one of those transcendental relationships, which are known as mellows. When such a person reaches the perfectional stage, he returns home back to Krishna in his pure spiritual identity. <coughs> I would just like to point out that this is really the special gift of this Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya, the path of surrender that we're following and following the acharyas, the teachers, this amazing gift to have a relationship with Krishna not knowing that he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in almost every other theological system, spiritual philosophy, this intimacy is not really fleshed out in all of its details as it is in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is why this is such an important scripture to read, to learn about these deep esoteric matters that Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is playing in the spiritual world with other persons who have achieved perfection that do not think that he is God. This is such a profound theological point that is so easily given to us by Srila Prabhupada and Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's really mind-blowing, actually. So, text 132. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then quoted, The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, the son of Mother Yashoda, is accessible to those devotees engaged in spontaneous loving service, but he is not as easily accessible to mental speculators, to those striving for self-realization by severe austerities and penances, 
or to those who consider the body the same as the self. Purport, this is a quote from Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 9, 21. Text 133, the authorities in the Vedic literature are known as the Shutiganas. I'm sorry, who are known as the Shutiganas worshipped Lord Krishna in the ecstasy of the gopis and followed in their footsteps. The personified authorities on the Vedic hymns acquired bodies like those of the gopis and took birth in Vraj Bhumi. In those bodies, they were allowed to enter into the Lord's Rasalila dance. Lord Krishna belongs to the cowherd community, and the gopis are the dearmost lovers of Krishna. Although the wives of the denizens of the heavenly planets are most opulent within the material world, neither they nor any other women in the material universe can acquire Krishna's, Krishna's association. The goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, wanted to enjoy Krishna and at the same time retain her spiritual body in the form of Lakshmi. However, she did not follow in the footsteps of the gopis in her worship of Krishna. Vyasadeva, the supreme authority on Vedic literature, composed the verse beginning, Nayam Sukapo Bhagavan, because no one can enter into the Rasa Lila dance in any body other than that of a gopi. <clears throat> Purport. This verse confirms a verse of the Bhagavad Gita 927. Yanti Deva Vrata Devan Pitran Yanti Pitravrataha Bhutani Yanti Bhutejva Yanti Mad Yajino Pimam. Lord Krishna said, Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. In the material world, every conditioned soul changes his material body again and again. But when the spirit soul is purified of all material coverings, there is no longer a chance of his accepting a material body. Such a soul then remains as in his original spiritual identity, a state that is possible to achieve only by understanding Krishna in truth through the practice of Krishna consciousness. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita 4.9, Janma karma chame divyam evam yo veti tattvataha taktva deham purnam janma neti mam eti sojana. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. <clears throat> Only when one regains his original spiritual body can he enter into the spiritual kingdom. As far as the Rasa Lila pastimes of the Lord are concerned, it is futile for one who is within the material world to attempt to imitate the Lord's dances. One has to attain a spiritual body like that of a gopi to enter into the pastimes of the Ras Lila. In the Nayam Sukapo verse, the devotees are referred to as bhakti mat, that is, fully engaged in devotional service and devoid of material contamination. One cannot enter into Krishna's Ras Lila dance simply by artificially imitating it or artificially thinking oneself a sake and dressing up like one. Krishna's Ras Lila dance is completely spiritual. It has nothing to do with material contamination. Therefore, no one can enter into this pastime by artificial material means. That is the instruction of the Nayam Sukapo verse, and it must be strictly understood. Text 138. Before this explanation was given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Venkata Bhatt thought that Srinarayan was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thinking in this way, Venkata Bhatt believed that worship of Narayan was the supreme form of worship, superior to all other processes of devotional service, for it was followed by Sri Vaishnava disciples of Ramanujacharya. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had understood this misconception of Venkata Bhatt's, and to correct it, the Lord talked so much in a joking way. The Lord then continued, my dear Venkata Bhatt, please do not continue doubting. 
Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and this is the conclusion of the Vedic literatures. Lord Narayan, the opulent form of Krishna, attracts the minds of the goddess of fortune and her followers. All these incarnations of Godhead are either plenary portions or parts of the plenary portions of the Purusha avatars, but Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead himself. In every age, he protects the world through his different features when the world is disturbed by the enemies of Indra. Because Krishna has four extraordinary qualities not possessed by Lord Narayan, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, always desires his company. Purport, Lord Narayan has 60 transcendental qualities. Over and above these, Krishna has four extraordinary transcendental qualities absent in Lord Narayan. These four qualities are, one, his wonderful pastimes, which are compared to an ocean. Two, his association in the circle of the supreme devotees in conjugal love, the gopis. Three, his playing on the flute, whose vibration attracts the three worlds. And four, his extraordinary beauty, who, which surpasses the beauty of the three worlds. Lord, Lord Krishna's beauty is unequaled and unsurpassed. So... We will stop here. It's nine o'clock. And you know, this beautiful conversation that's being had in a friendly way. And it's very important to understand this point that to really dive deep into mm, topmost philosophical conclusions and devotional service. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing that he's doing it with very friendly relationships. He's not trying to argue with anyone in a meaningless way. And you can see how this conversation, even the Lord, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself is quoting from Shastra to give clarity to even what he's saying. So it's amazing conversation that is many different layers that we can peel back, 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 and go deeper and deeper. So if there's any comments or questions on what was read today, we can take that now. All right. Prabhu, what is meant by the three worlds? Mm. This is Indira asking? Yes. Oh, oh, <laughs> Krishna. 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 Um, three worlds means the, um, for those who chant the Gayatri Mantra, they know the three worlds as Bhu, Bhur, and Bhuva. So the lower planetary systems, the middle planetary systems, and then the upper planetary systems. And um, a full discussion of this is found in Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 5, where uh, the earthly realm is known as Bhu Mandala, <clears throat> which includes much more than just the earth globe. But uh, Bhu Mandala is considered the middle planetary system. So this is where you have the humans residing and the earth globe. Below the lower planetary systems, you have the subterranean heavenly planets. This is where Prahlad and uh, Bali Maharaj are living with Vamandev. And then you also have the uh, the Dhanavas, the Dayatas, and the uh, Nagas, or the different uh, living entities who live in the lower planetary systems. And then you have the upper planetary systems where you have Indra's abode, Svargaloka. But then even above that, you have Maharloka, Janaloka, where great sages, like the four Kumars, and great personalities are engaged in meditation. And then the top of the 
upper planetary systems is Brahma Loka, where Lord Brahma resides. And then, so this is the three worlds and also known as the 14 planetary systems. And then actually the hellish planets that are mentioned in Bhagavatam, they're actually not part of the three worlds. They're below the, the even the three worlds. They're not connected with the other systems. Is that okay? Does that yes, mean? yes. I have read that and I confuse the um, lower planetary systems with the hellish planets. So I'm glad you cleared that up. Thank you. Yeah, and it, <clears throat> in uh, Bhagavatam, it's kind of amazing how those in the subterranean heavenly planets, the lower planetary systems, there's actually even more enjoyment than the upper planetary systems because there's no sense of time. The sun doesn't shine, shine there, and so there's uh, no impending doom of time and uh, no conception of growing older, which is an interesting aspect of, uh, yeah, when you really want to materially enjoy, time really <laughs> sucks everything away. <laughs> so, yeah. so that leads me to another question I was thinking about yesterday. Um, mm. So time is inconspicuous, right? By its absence in the spiritual world. So when Krishna leaves the gopis, um, to go to Matura, and everybody in Vindavan is so upset. What is their, what is their feeling of longevity in terms of him being away? Does that make sense? Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a very, very deep question. <clears throat> yeah, and I was just reading how there's something known as. Uh, Chit Kala. So Kala is time. And in the material world, we have this, uh, you would say, material time of past, present, and future. <clears throat> and in the spiritual world, this spiritual time, there's only the eternal present. And that's something very hard for us to understand. Uh, we get a glimpse of it when we get into like a nice routine. And some people say, well, every day is exactly the same. But still, our minds are confined to past, present, and future. And so for us to really understand something as eternal and eternally present, and for the residents of Vrindavan, when there's this coming and going, as Shri Rupa Goswami states at Maga Bhagavatamrita, where Krishna, he goes for a certain amount of months, <clears throat> and then he comes back. There's, yeah, this spiritual time where it seems like there's time. It seems like there might be a past, present, and future because Krishna is coming and going. But at the same time, they're never without Krishna. And so some acharyas, I don't want to get too technical and, and, and um, maybe, uh, I, anyway, I'll just get technical and <laughs> see who, who can kind of swallow it. But our Acharya is talking about how in Goloka Vrindavan, in the spiritual world that's in the spiritual sky, there's no uh, separation where Krishna goes to Mathura, Krishna goes to Vrindavan back and forth. That's only in Vraj Bhumi where the spiritual world descends to the material world. And so these earthly pastimes or this um, spiritual world found in the material world, that's where you see the coming and going, where Krishna goes to Mathura, Dwarka, there's seemingly separation. So those same residents are in Goloka Vrindavan, and they expand themselves to be in the Raj Bhumi, the earthly Vrindavan. So technically, they're never without Krishna, and they're experiencing many different dimensions or prakashas of Krishna's Leela. 
So for them, it's hard for us to understand uh, technically what it means when Krishna's being separated from them. Does that kind of make sense or help? It's Yeah, so like in the spiritual world, he never leaves, but he has this pastime in the material world. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in the spiritual world, there's no uh, demons, although there's a sense of demons. There's no um, coming and going, but this is, but in Vrindavan, in the material realm, we can see how there's Agasura, Bakasura, there's these demons who come to Vrindavan and add to the pastimes, and then there's the coming and going, but that is not technically found in the Goloka Vrindavan, which is called the Aprakrat, the uh, unmanifest spiritual world. Thank you. That's really sweet. Thank you. <laughs> well, Bala Prabhu. So is, is Vipralamba above the, the mood of Vipralamba? Is it expressed? Is there, do you, do you have some references of the Acharyas or something you've read where the Vipralamba that Mahaprabhu and his associates are exemplifying? And then the Vipralamba, you know, the, just like the Vipralamba of how the six Goswamis are, you know, hey Radhe, Raja Devi ke, you know, where are you? So is that emotion there in, in Goloka then? If there's not the coming and going, what, what's it like there? Uh, or, I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe not to go so into it, but yeah, just <laughs> since the topic was brought up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, as yeah. Prophet said, you'll find out when you get there. Uh, <laughs> but at least just if there's some, maybe just in your readings from the Acharyas, if there's something that you've, reflected on yeah so again going back to like today's reading the vipralamba is there to nourish the sambhog so vipralamba what tushna prabhu is mentioning is the mood of the ecstasy of separation and sambhog is the ecstasy of coming together and so when we dive deeper into krishna's pastimes like today's reading was about the ras lila well, we can find that there's separation there. Krishna leaves the Ras Lila and the gopis, they sing these beautiful verses known as the Gopi Gita, where they're going to different bushes and different trees, experiencing separation from Krishna, even though Krishna is still in Vrindavan. So as to what Indira was talking about as where, you know, there's a sense of time and Krishna leaves Mathura and he's gone for a certain period of time. And then they're experiencing that time. So there it goes back to that Chit Kala. There's daily activities where Krishna, he'll go to the cow pastures with the cowherd boys. And the cowherd boys are experiencing the ecstasy of being together with Krishna, that Sambo. But Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, they're still at home and they're feeling separation from Krishna. But they know that Krishna is going to come back in the afternoon and they're going to experience that ecstasy of coming together with Krishna when they see the dust being raised by the hoof prints of the cows and they can hear Krishna's flute and they experience this ecstasy of coming back, uh, of Krishna coming back to uh, Vrindavan or Nan, you know, the palace of Nanda Maharaj. So there's these experiences of separation and experiences of coming together during the different pastimes of Krishna. And so that's where Chit Kala comes into play, this transcendental time of seeming like there's these activities that Krishna is doing throughout the day. And there's even a spiritual sun, there's a spiritual moon, because we have to understand that everything that's here in the material world is a reflection or a distorted, uh, you know, you could say it's like a shadow of the substance of the of the real world. So in Goloka Vrindavan, Srila Jiva Goswami talks about how there is an actual transcendental sun. It's not like the material sun. It's actually the transcendental sun, transcendental moon. There's even the demigods. 
but these are the pure demigods. They're transcendental demigods, which then the material demigods are based on in the material world. There's even Artakama Moksha Dharma. This is stated in Brahma Sanghita, how there's religion, economic development in its purity, in its transcendental, uh, you'd say, substance in the spiritual world. So I hope that <laughs> doesn't get too technical in kind of keeping some things hidden there. I hope that helps. If you, if, if you or Mother Nidra or Vrinda would like to say anything to help oh, elaborate. It, your your ex, your expounding on that reminded me just of some of the principles in that final verse of the Govindam prayers, Shriya Kanta Kanta, and where Lord Brahma is saying every living entity is tasty, all water is nectar. So yeah, not ordinary water, not ordinary trees, or as you said, not the ordinary sun and moon. And yeah, thank you so much. Beautiful. Uh, just meditating. Krishna is such such the transcendental choreographer. Uh, arranging such incredible lila. So thank you for presenting that in reference to Shastra and Acharya so nicely. Hare Krishna. Thanks for both. Gauranga. Gauranga. Thank you for, oh, Hare Krishna. Thanks, Sudo. That was wonderful. Uh, I was just wondering, um, like Lakshmi Devi, she couldn't enter in because she didn't have the mood. Now, uh, Narda becomes gopi, the Shiva becomes gopi. So is that because they had the they had the right mood. <laughs> yeah, that's a, <laughs> yeah, another deep, deep topic, how Narada becomes Nardi Gopi. Even Arjuna is uh, Ar Ar Arjunia Gopia. He becomes Gopi. And Shiva, we know, who is becomes the protector of the Ras Lila, which is an interesting point. Uh, yeah, they had the right mood. And they also surrendered to Vrinda Devi. So this is another aspect of devotional service that what does it mean when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mean, you know, is talking about the Upanishads following in the footsteps of the gopis. They had the proper mood and then they surrendered to Vrinda Devi, who is the presiding goddess of Vrindavan. And she's the one who actually dips them into the ponds of Rindavan. And when they come out, they have a completely different body. Uh, we see how even when Lord Shiva, he comes out in a form as a gopi, and he goes before the other gopis, they're saying, who is this gopi? She has a crescent moon on her forehead. She has this jata, these dreadlocks. We've never seen this girl before. Who is she? Where does she come from? And, and interestingly, yeah, Lord Shiva, he has the proper mood of following the gopis, but he doesn't participate in the Ras Lila. He actually stays outside as a gopi with a trishul, with a trident, and he won't let anybody who has an improper mood enter into the Ras Lila. So that's another aspect of following in the footsteps of the gopis. We have to get the blessings of Lord Shiva. Otherwise, we'll try to improperly enter into the Ras Lila. And by having material imperfections, Lord Shiva will keep us out with this, with this trident. So yeah, proper mood is proper mood is everything. Would you like to add anything? Thanks so much, Prabhu. So is that why we uh, go to the Shiva temple? Like you take your parikrama in, in Vrindavan and they'll start like at a certain Shiva temple, get the, get the blessings of Lord Shiva to enter in? Yeah, yeah. Um, so just as Krishna is known as Gopal, Pal means, or Pala means protector, Go means the cows. So Shiva is known as Kshetrapal. So wherever there's a holy place, there's usually Shiva Lingam. So we see even in Radha Kund, there's Kundeshwar Mahadev. He's the protector of Radha Kund. He's the protector of Shamakund. He's uh, 
the protector of Govardhan Hill. He's the protector of the Ras Lila. And so, yeah, he's known as Kshetrapal Mahadev. If anybody has improper mood of entering into the holy places, then Lord Shiva keeps them, keeps them out. I actually can't enter into any holy place without the blessings of Lord Shiva. Okay. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your kind attention in today's reading. Please forgive any offenses I may have made. If I did anything right, it's by the glories of Shri Shri Guru and Garanga and all of you Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Manchakalpa Thirubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhyevacha Petitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai Bhata Goswami Ki Jai Shri Jai Dev Goswami Tiraba Mahotsava Ki Jai Shri the Prabhupada Ki Jai Thank you, Vala Prabhu. Wonderful reading. And all meetings.